How's it going everyone and welcome back to LTA 3D. Now, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded and there is a very good reason for that. Recently, my partner gave birth to our beautiful baby daughter, Liliana, and uh, I've been spending some time bonding with her and just spending some time with the family, just relaxing, you know, adjusting to uh, the baby's hours because it's a little bit difficult to record content now, but I'm getting back into the swing of things. And while I've been taking this time off, a lot of new printers have been leaked slash released. Uh, so that's pretty much what we're going to cover today. So enjoy the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into this uh, sort of update video. Alrighty, so the first big thing is that the Flashforge AD5X has finally been released. Now, this was supposed to be released, I believe, September, August last year, but has had multiple delays due to apparently the poop shoot. The purge shoot wasn't um, working well with TPU and it was marketed as a TPU 3D printer, but apparently they fixed that and you can now purchase it for $5.99 AUD. Uh, and currently you can also get $50 off by using the code unlock AD5X. So if you're interested in picking up one of these printers, I'll have it linked in the description down below. Uh, it will be an affiliate link. So if you also want to help out the channel, really appreciate it if you use that link when you buy it. Um, but uh, I'm really hoping I can get my hands on one of these because uh, I would like to compare it with the 5M and sort of just, just see if it's actually worth the purchase. Anyway, uh, also, uh, Anycubic has released the Cobra 3 V2, um, which is a little bit confusing. I know that a lot of people are kind of like, why have you sort of released almost exactly the same printer? I know they've said there were some upgrades, um, but I found their comparison table on their website a little bit difficult to uh, understand what has been upgraded. So I asked good old fashioned chat GPT to sort of give me the key differences and uh, here's the key differences. So the Cobra 3 V2 offers a slightly larger build volume uh, of 255 by 255 by 260 as opposed to 250 by 250 by 260. It also has auto leveling enhancements. Uh, there's apparently hardware structure opt optimizations alongside the Levy Q3.0 auto leveling, providing improved leveling precision. Whether that's the case or not, I'm not sure. I probably won't be getting one. I've got a Bamboo Lab A1 and I'm quite happy with that. Um, there's also apparently a 720p camera included, whereas in the old uh, Cobra 3, it was an add-on. Uh, uh, it was an optional add-on that you had to purchase separately. Um, I believe that is pretty much it. So not a massive change, not really anything super special as opposed to the other one, just slightly you know bigger build volume and has the camera that comes with it so yeah uh now one thing that i don't know if any of you guys have seen or whether you've you are aware of this i, I saw this quite a while ago but i didn't want to comment on it because i wasn't sure if this was some ai this was when a lot of ai leaks were coming out and i wasn't sort of gonna jump on anything unless there was a bit more information released but nothing's been released yet but over on reddit apparently this was released in a wechat group uh that x2 and snapmaker are working on a four tool changer i believe uh which would be very interesting i was going through the comments here trying to see if there's any other information i saw that someone said it could be 270 cubed but obviously this is just speculation there's no actual specs for it yet but uh, if I see anything or hear anything, I'll um, I'll do another update video on just the uh, X Tool slash Snapmaker collab. Uh, another thing which I don't know if many people are aware of, uh, there's a company I believe called 3D Penny, like company 3D Penny. I don't know. Um, they they've just I believe released a filament extruder and recycler uh, at a pretty affordable price point. I believe. I believe when I was looking at it, it was like what eight. 99 us i think which i think is i think it's i think it's a fair price to be honest for a a filament recycler um i know there was another company i think it was was it loop or something that was doing a recycler that they never really had any proper 
videos on or anything and people kept calling them out and they're like no nah, we'll do a proper video and so forth showing how it works and i still don't think they really actually did um in this case i found out about this just by scrolling on youtube i was looking on youtube looking for 3d printing stuff and i came across uh their youtube channel where they actually have some videos on it working um and it's proper video you can actually watch the whole entire process um from you know melting down the filament uh and then re-spooling it onto a new spool so if you're interested in that i'll have it linked below give it a look let me know your thoughts on it because if if this works really well then it might be the first sort of i guess affordable simple to use filament recycler uh in other news uh yumi 3d um this has been all over my TikTok recently. Um, basically, fast multicolor bed slinging 3D printers coming to Kickstarter soon uh, at fantastic price points by the looks of it. So you've got a 235 by 235 by 270 mil from 195 US. You've got a 335 by 335 by 400 mil for 315. And you have a 435 by 435 by 500 mil for 375 US. Now, yes, it's a bed slinger, but it's claiming you can add up to 12 colors on the printer. It goes 700 mils per second, open source, 20,000 millimeters per second cube acceleration and lower waste. Now, that's probably the only thing here that really grabbed my attention. Yes, the 12 colors are cool, but co-print. We'll talk about that later. Um, low waste. I saw a video. I don't know if it was by them or by a creator who's working with them. But they did a print comparison with the A1 or the A1 Mini showing how much estimated waste there was. And it was about 50% less waste. Now, I don't know how they've managed to do it, but the prints didn't have any bleeding or anything that they showed. So I'll see if I can find that video. If I can, I'll link it in the description down below. But um, I would definitely keep your eyes open and keep on, on the lookout for when this release because I think it's, uh, it's going to be a pretty cool printer, to be honest, at, at a fantastic price point, decent build volume, like... What's not to love about it? I was saying in another video a while ago that I would love to see ways that people can reduce the waste and so forth. And it looks like, looks like someone's doing it. Um, and then probably the big thing and the main reason you guys are probably here is it looks like another Bamboo Lab printer has been leaked. And this time it looks like it's the printer that everyone wanted the H2D to be. Now, I saw this leaked a while ago on Twitter, but like I said, there was a lot of sort of AI sort of things that were coming in my algorithm and I just didn't know at this point and I didn't just want to put a video out there and then find out it's completely rubbish. Now granted it does look kind of legit but I was also spending time with my family and I was like I don't really have time to make a video right now but I'm back now we have a video. Um, the cool thing about this and probably the big thing about this is in the bottom corner there is 340 mils. Now we don't know if that's 340 mil cubed. I'm going to assume, since it's a single head, it's probably three more, like 340 mil cubed. Um, but it looks like similar internals to the H2D. And it has essentially the hot end of an A1. The whole extruder head looks like an upgraded A1 unit with a little um, LiDAR on the right side of it. So it should also have the same hot swappable hot end as the A1. And if so, this is definitely going to be what people want. Like this is what they should release. But I know, uh, I believe the CEO or something said a while ago, I saw a video, he mentioned that they were gonna release a new printer before they released like an X2 or a bigger printer. So I guess they did that with the H2D. They did exactly what they uh, said they were gonna do. And now they're sort of working on that bigger H1, H1D, I don't know, H2. I'm sort of thinking it's either gonna be H2 or H1, because I'm assuming the D is for dual extruder. So no one really has a confirmed naming yet. A lot of people are putting H1, H1D out there. Um, pretty much the only information we have is this is what it kind of looks like internally, and it may be 340 mil cubed. Uh, if I see anything in regards to this or hear anything, obviously I'll put out another video because this is banging views right now, let's be real. Um, and it's what everyone wants. So I'll definitely release another video in the future. Um, thanks for watching guys. Uh, 
enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts on pretty much everything that's been released. The 85X, whether you'll be getting one. The Cobra 3v2, whether you reckon it's worth it. Uh, if you think it's a bad idea, so forth. What you think on the X2 and Snapmaker collab. And uh, also, please let me know your thoughts on the Yumi printer and the C1 filament extruder from 3D Panny. Because I think that is a little gem that not many people have commented on yet. So um, give that a look. Let me know. And as always, happy printing.